Hello and welcome to this review of my Cool Green Fold 2000. It's a um, keyboard. It's kind of weird, isn't it? The way it drapes like this. It reminds me a bit of that painting by Salvador Dali with the drooping clocks. Now, you know, I've been pleasantly surprised by a keyboard before, as well as unpleasantly surprised. But sometimes you just know it's got to be bad. I mean, just look at it. Essentially, the keyboard is just a mat of rubber domes and membranes, which are flexible by themselves, but instead of sticking it in a hard plastic case, they stuck it in a watertight bag, pretty much. And yes, from a cursory glance, it does actually appear to be watertight. Everything, including the cable, is completely sealed into the bag that they put it in. The advantage of this is that you can just roll up the keyboard like this and take it with you so that you don't have to use your crappy laptop keyboard. Or if you're going swimming but desperately need to finish that quarterly progress report, you can do both at the same time. Actually, I've read that the idea behind the waterproofness is so that you can wash the keyboard easily, which, in all fairness, does sound like it would be useful. The disadvantage is that you're left with what's possibly the most diabolically awful key feel I've seen yet in a keyboard. And believe me, I've seen some seriously terrifying shit biscuits so far. Previously, I showed this Smith Corona bellend, which has keys that are so scratchy that they're more or less constantly stuck. It's so bad that it's almost unusable. But now that I've tried this thing, this might just take the cake. The problem is, of course, that it has all the weaknesses of a rubber dome keyboard, and more than that besides. So, first of all, it's got a really bad, mushy feel, but not mushy in a good or fun way. It's not soft, but kind of hard, and that's because you're typing on basically, well, breast implants. Second, being foldable, it doesn't have stabilizers. So, they broke the spacebar, for example, up into three keys and they stuck several membrane nodes under there to increase the chances that you randomly hit one, but if you don't hit near enough to one, it doesn't register. The same goes for the other keys. Try and hit them on the side, and they won't work. This, for example, is not firing it at all. That's how bad it is. Third, it's rubber domes, so you have to completely bottom out before a key registers. And this means that you really have to hammer the keyboard or it won't register properly. Going from the soft, refined, responsive feel of mechanicals to this abomination, that's basically day and night. You end up with really cramped fingers pretty quickly too. Normally, I use a keyboard for at least a week for you guys so I can get a feel for all the little details, which I'd otherwise miss out on. But I really only managed for four days before my fingers just couldn't take it anymore. And even then, I think I showed the patience of a saint, to be honest. I was making so many errors, and my typing speed was reduced to about 45 words per minute at best, that I thought, fuck it, let's just get rid of this shit. Now, when I do a review, I like to judge a keyboard in context. So, if something is designed for military use or for use in public places, it was probably designed for toughness more than typing feel. So, if that feels horrible to type on, I wouldn't be quite as harsh on it as long as it was built like a brick shithouse. Now, this thing was built for two reasons. Use in harsh environments and to provide a better typing alternative than a laptop keyboard but it doesn't provide a better typing alternative to anything. In fact, I'm screaming for a laptop keyboard right now. As for its use in harsh environments, I guess in some ways this system could be fairly robust. It's completely sealed in, so no dirt or dust could get inside, which is a plus. The key cap legends are printed on the silicon itself, which is under this clear plastic protective layer, so I don't think it would come off anytime soon. And because there's barely any rigid parts in this, I guess you could drop it many times and it would be totally A-OK. -okay. One thing I did notice compared to other flexible keyboards is that the keys are much taller. See, normally they don't come up much more than on a chiclet board, but these poke up fairly high. It was designed around the Windows 2000 era, and in fact it has Windows keys. And at the time, it was relatively cheap for a foldable keyboard at $40 in retail. But nowadays, if you go on Amazon, you can buy a keyboard for well under half that. I'm really not advocating you get this keyboard, though, because it's worse than what it's supposed to replace. 
And even in harsh environments, I'd rather just keep buying shitty rubber dome keyboards every other week than type on this gurgling spunk trumpet. <laughs> in fact, you should try and play some games with it. All I can say is good fucking luck with that. Anyway, that's the end of this video. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard, if you can call it that.